Brian Rising, Billy Carson here, Forbidden Knowledge. Early morning, watching the sunrise in Dubai right now. I know for a lot of y'all, it's probably nighttime, probably um, 10, 11 o'clock, maybe 9, 10, or 11 o'clock p.m. I'm already one full day ahead of you. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? All right. What's up? My boy Henry. What's happening, man? I'm going to be back down there uh, Thursday. Be back in the States on Thursday, Henry. Yeah. 7.30 p.m. in L.A. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. It's 7 a.m. over here in Dubai. Just got done watching the sun come up over here. And uh, getting ready to go get some nice breakfast. Then go hit the gym and work out. It's going to be nice. It's beautiful out here. Give you guys a sneak peek of, of the Persian Gulf. Well, I'm staying in the Atlantis Palm. Really nice hotel. Incredible. It's still really foggy here. There's a lot of fog in the mornings because of the humidity. It's already like about 90, 90 degrees. Yesterday, it got up to uh, 116 in the shade. And uh, today is probably gonna do the same. It's already feeling really hot and humid here, but it's great. Uh, it's, been, it's been great to take this trip out to Egypt and do all this work. On the way back from Egypt, I decided to take a few days off because after working 11 days straight with no breaks, 10 hours, 15 hours and some days filming, you know, it just it takes a lot out of you working in that 120 degree heat every single day for all those hours. So on the way back, I decided to just come back and just take a break in Dubai for a few days and hop on a plane on Wednesday instead of just trying to do all that hard work and then fly straight back Sometimes you just got to take a break and detox your brain, you know what I mean? It's a lot of work, man. People have no idea. It's nonstop, nonstop. Yeah, it's really hot out here, man. It's really, it, it's super hot. <laughs> like it's, people have no idea. It's, when I say it's hot, it's so hot that in Egypt, for example, that your sweat doesn't really show up that much in your clothes because it evaporates before it has a chance to actually leave a sweat ring. <laughs> so the sun is taking it away that quick. You don't even know you can be getting dehydrated. You have to drink water all day long because if you don't, you can actually become dehydrated and not even know it. And here in Dubai, we're on the Persian Gulf. And so, uh, which is what you see behind me. It's like the one of the inlets of the Persian Gulf. And behind that, you have the full Gulf. But it's, uh, it's so humid here and it's so hot. So here you have more humidity and the heat. I'm kind of used to the humidity living in Florida, South Florida, so it's kind of normal to me. But it is a little extra hot here, you know, getting up past 100 degrees every single day. But uh, it's, it's great. It's great. It's been a great trip. Uh, when I was in Egypt, I gave away two cartouches. I gave away uh, a cartouche. Uh, the first person that won it was Deanna. And the second person that won one, these were 18 karat gold cartouches. The second person was Nelson, somebody named Nelson. Uh, and so they won those cartouches. All they did was they just text me, hashtag uh, Egypt. Now I'm going to be giving away some more of these crowns. These crowns are handmade. Admit it, this is steel. This is all handmade work by Copper Child and Mike L. And I'm going to start giving these away. So I'm going to start doing this one again. I gave away seven two weeks ago, or eight two weeks ago. And so I'm going to have you text hashtag crown, which I'm typing in right here. You text hashtag crown to my text number. I just put it there in the, um, thanks for the badges, guys. The badges go to help the children. And by the way, uh, the, the money that I got from the previous badges that I did on some previous lives even though I didn't get it yet I donated it to kids in Egypt there were some kids in Egypt I went to this carpet making factory where they take little kids that uh, would normally be sold into sex slavery or prostitution or selling drugs I'm talking about little kids I'm talking about 8, 9, 10 year olds 
and they have them in there with this new program, having them in there weaving carpets to keep them off the streets. And so I took the money and I went to each kid and gave them a donation directly to them so they had some money in their pocket. So that's where your money went the last time. And that was at the, um, the fact, I believe there might be a video footage of it when we, were, when we were out there. We talked about it on my podcast um, that came out last Thursday. I was with the Egyptologist and the guy that took me there. And they were talking about it and the kids were in there calling me an angel because nobody had ever come in there to give them any, any money. And uh, it, made, it made their day, literally, it made their day. I gave every single kid, there was one kid I almost missed. I saw him way in the corner on the other side of the factory. And at the last minute I saw him right before I was leaving, I ran over there and gave him some money. So they had some money in their pocket. Uh, these kids are working like adult hours you know, 10, 12 hours a day at, at that age and really getting nothing for it, peanuts. But at least they're getting safety, security, they're not on the streets and they're not sold into prostitution. So, you know, uh, hopefully that, you know, I gave them enough to hopefully take care of them for a few days each. Um, you know, over there the money, I think it's 16 to one US dollar. So they should be okay. It should be okay for about a week at least with what I gave them. I believe I gave each one of them 50 Egyptian pounds and they live in the inner city area so the cost of things is very low there. The average person only makes $100 a month. That's a full grown working adult, 100 bucks a month. That's their average income. So you can imagine uh, 100 bucks goes a long way. And I remember I gave my driver last trip I came up here, I gave my driver $100 US and he literally broke down and cried. And he said that I fed his family for a month. So the money goes to good, to, to good things. I like to, you know, like, like you guys know, I like to be directly involved in the giving so that I know it's going to the right place and the right people. Because if you give things to some of these big companies, you know, the names, I don't even want to put their names out there because they got so much power they can shut the whole live down. But those companies, um, they don't really give, you know, they, they, they don't give the money out. I remember Hurricane Harvey, people were donating to those big nonprofits to help the people. They kept 95% of the money and gave away only 5%. 95% 90, went towards their actual income. They keep all the money for personal income. The directors getting paid. I think I published the income list of the people on those huge, huge nonprofits that quote unquote, you know, take in huge donations to help people. One of them, one of their names start with the name Red, you know, the second part of the name, you know, and all those 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 big come those big nonprofits. And they uh, the majority of the money goes into their pocket, never gets to the people. So sad. That's why, you know, when I learned that back when a lot of hurricanes were coming to Florida back in the early 2000s, I learned about where the money was going. And I was like, I donated all this money to this thing. And how come these people, you know, this is in Florida where I was living. I don't see any, any result from this. And then I learned that nobody gets that money. Very, very few people <laughs> get that money. So I said, from now on, if I'm going to do something, I have to be involved and I have to know exactly where it's going or I, or I have to directly have a personal relationship or know the, the source of who's taking care of the help. You know what I'm saying? Because other than that, forget it. I ain't going to do it. And, and now I just try to be involved with the direct, you know, contact myself as much as possible to make sure that the right people are getting it. Like when we raised that 58000 for Hurricane Maria victims in Puerto Rico, you can see the videos on this account and the videos on my YouTube channel are still up there of me going into uh, Sam's Club and Costco, picking up the supplies by hand, loading it on the pallets by hand with my son. My middle son, Giovanni, helped me out a lot. Thank you, Gio. And, um, and you know, and delivering this stuff directly to the Cheesecake Factory in Sunrise, Florida. And why there? Because they had a private jet that bypassed the ports. Because a lot of donations were getting stuck in the port. So by taking it to my people at the Cheesecake Factory, they would put it on their private jet and take it straight to the Cheesecake Factory in Puerto Rico 
and then people who needed supplies would go to Cheesecake Factory to pick up the supplies, bypassing the ports. That's the kind of stuff I like to do. See, you got to know how to play in this matrix out here. So um, it's all good, but I, I did pin this comment in the chat. Hashtag crown, text hashtag crown to 954-245-0086. I'm going to give some more of these, give away some more of these as soon as I land in Florida, which will be most likely Thursday, all right? And then um, the following week, which will be Monday, they'll go out in the mail. The people are, And I also have a lot of souvenirs, so I'll be doing some more hashtag giveaways on the souvenirs that I picked up. I had to buy a whole separate luggage just for the souvenirs that I had so much. Uh, so I'll be giving away some authentic souvenirs directly that were, you know, come directly from Egypt. Uh, and I think that's going to be cool, too, to give away some souvenirs. I got to save a few for myself <laughs> and my, my kids. But um, I'm looking forward to giving away some souvenirs to you guys as well. All right. Um, a lot of stuff going on. The Black Knight Satellite documentary is my next big thing to wrap up. I've been working on that for a while. As you guys know, the shutdown slowed it down. And so people that I had to put, that I wanted to put in the documentary were unavailable for obvious reasons. Now that everything is, you know, kind of quasi-normal, um, they're open to having me come do the interviews and film them. So my next big thing will be as soon as I land, I only got a couple days to get my head back together, then I got to hop on about four flights and go out and uh, pop around the country real quick and get these last few interviews in and get the, get the final bit of editing done and see if I can possibly get this thing out before Christmas. That would be fantastic. So that's what the Black Knight Satellite documentary. We're getting really, really close on that one. Uh, I think it's going to be an amazing piece of work. I'm looking forward to getting that out. Uh, so it's coming very, very soon. Still under the, about 70% edited already. I just need to get these other key researchers, scientists uh, in the documentary. These are some of the people I wanted from the beginning. I want to make sure I get them in now that I have the opportunity and they've agreed to it. So I'm going to now uh, rush to get out to these states and, and take care of that real quick. So I've got to be flying for a week straight city to city to knock that out and make sure it's done the right way and the proper way. Um, so yeah, just wrapping up, you know, wrapping up that documentary. It's going to be phenomenal. The Black Knight Satellite, if you don't know about it, it's an object that's above us in space and it's been there for a very, very long time. Nikola Tesla detected it back in the late 1800s. They made Time magazine in 1960. And the original journalist that wrote the article for Time magazine, he's in the documentary. Nobody's ever interviewed him ever, not even once. And I was able to get him, catch up with him in the UK. And we got him. We interviewed him for three days straight. There's a lot of information he wanted to say that he didn't put into the Time magazine article. Or, or, yeah, so it's going to be in the Black Knight Satellite documentary. And um, we got a couple of other really key people and some ancient evidence of this object. This object is technological. It changes its own orbit, intelligent design. It goes from an equatorial orbit to a polar orbit on its own, and it actually followed Sputnik to the moon in the 1960s when the Russians sent up the first satellite to go through a lunar orbit. It also followed Apollo 11, and uh, that's well documented. We have the statements from the actual astronauts stating this. So it's going to be interesting. This is going to be stuff that people never heard before. They're not, they, they, don't even, they don't even know. A lot of people don't know it, it exists, and it's still up there right now. And it's on several space agency websites labeled as Space Junk. So the images of it can be downloaded directly. It's not our images, it's documented images uh, that are already up there on the, on the uh, official websites. They put it as junk because they don't want to say what they think it is or what they know it is, and they will not uh, move towards these things or, or, or try to uh, interact with it because they don't know what fail safes it has. They don't know what it may or may not do, what defense systems it may have built in. Uh, so it's going to be amazing. The Black Knight Satellite documentary coming very, very soon. An ancient object right above our heads. 
that uh, comes so close to the earth, you can see with the naked eye every two years. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, other than that, guys, we got a lot of great stuff going on. I'm really looking forward to the uh, uh, other documentary I have, The Mystery of the Gosford Glyphs. That's in the beginning stages of uh, editing. And The Mystery of the Gosford Glyphs are the proto-Egyptian hieroglyphs that I discovered. I, I keep saying discovered. I can't say discovered. That the proto-Egyptian hieroglyphs that I was um, led to by the... Uh, Aboriginals and some guides out there in Australia. Thanks for the badge, musical taste, uh, taste, musical taste. Uh, the um, these glyphs are amazing. They're Proto-Egyptian. They've been dated now to 5,000 uh, years old. They uh, and how can you date them? Well, each time you carve something into stone, patina grows inside the crevice, so you can date the patina. That tells you how old the glyphs are. And they're amazing because there's also another set of glyphs next to them that the Aboriginal people say are Pleiadian hieroglyphs. And nobody has deciphered these glyphs to date. No linguist, nobody on the planet has deciphered them. And these Pleiadian glyphs are also dated back 5,000 years ago. So we have two distinct hieroglyphs um, in Australia and a petroglyph, about a 40 foot by 40 foot petroglyph of Thoth from Egypt. Thoth, T-H-O-T-H, also known as, known as Hermes. You know, the, uh, the, I wrote a book about him. It. It's called The Compendium of the Emerald Tablets, my book, which has been a bestseller for 33 months now. Thanks uh, again for the, for, the, uh, for the badges, guys. Thank you, Mr. Jaster, Mr. M. Jaster. Uh, so it's been amazing. And... Uh, they call him in Australia, they call him Thoth Amabi. That's his name there. So he's been all around the planet. I saw him in Cambodia. I saw Thoth in, of course, Mexico, South America, Peru. This uh, entity, this guy, who's not a god. I mean, he, he never called himself a god. Only the people, only humans call him god because they don't understand his level of intelligence. Yeah, but you can find him all over the world. In South America, he's known as Quetzalcoatl, Lord Bacal, Kukul Khan, the Flying Dragon. He's known as uh, in uh, Varicocha. He's also known in Japan as Wang Di, the first emperor of Japan. In Europe, he's known as Mercury, Odin. Uh, he's known as Hermes, of course, in Africa. He's known as Thoth. He ruled over Egypt for 14 he, he It wasn't really Egypt. Let me change that. It was the land of Kim. It was long before they called it Egypt. He ruled over the land of Kim for 14,000 years, according to the Egyptians themselves. It's in the hieroglyphs. They, they, they document this stuff. They don't just make it up. And then um, he's also known throughout Africa as Jehudi, Tehudi, Tehudi. Okay, so he's got many names. And why many names? Because this guy lived for thousands of years. And one of the most amazing things I discovered in Egypt, I discovered the halls of Amenti and the rejuvenation chambers that he talks about in the Emerald Tablets. And I actually got inside of one. All that footage and all that information is coming out soon on Forbidden Knowledge TV. So if you don't have a subscription yet, you're going to want to subscribe ASAP. This is stuff you've never seen or heard before. Nowhere. Forbidden Knowledge TV. And so one of the temple priests allowed me to go inside of one of the chambers. And uh, it's well we, well, we documented it very, very well. Very, very well. I see some of the badges coming in. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Jaster, for the, for the badges. So the halls of Amenti are real. The rejuvenation chambers are real. And I got inside of one. And it's all on 4K video, live from Egypt. So we're, <laughs> this is going to be some incredible stuff. You've never seen anybody talk about this, document this. It's going to be mind-blowing stuff. And when I got inside of one, I started feeling energetic. My, my, my body started feeling incredible almost instantaneously. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to bringing that to you guys. It's going to be amazing. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rover, for the badge. And um, 
so yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming out. Also, you, some of you may or may not know, but we were approved, Forbidden Knowledge was approved by the SEC for a Regulation CF, um, which gives you the ability to sell shares. So Forbidden Knowledge is able to sell shares. Thank you, Musical Taste, for the badges. And uh, shares are available for uh, $1 a share. And there's only a limited amount of shares. The first round, they only uh, approve you for 1 million and 70 shares. I think we already sold in five days. It's at 170,000 shares are gone. So they're going very, very fast. And so this is a ground floor opportunity to own shares and stock in a company that's exploding, that's already profitable. Forbidden Knowledge is already making profits. It's a ground floor opportunity, and I did this so I can help create millionaires. So that's my goal. My goal is to help create millionaires because I'm a problem solver. Too many people out here that um, you know are looking for opportunities and just can't seem to find the best ones. And so I said, well, if I take a small percentage of forbidden knowledge and make it available publicly, then people can actually own shares of forbidden knowledge. And as I, as I grow and I become bigger, they have a chance to profit and grow and become bigger as well. Thank you uh, for the badges there. I just saw H2 Jizzle, H2O Jizzle, thank you for the badges. And Sincere Judah, thank you for the badges. And so, um, so you can go to the link in the bio on this account. You can go to ForbiddenKnowledge.com and click on Invest. And you can become a shareholder in Forbidden Knowledge. Uh, I would say probably when we hit around 800,000 shares sold, which will be probably in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, uh, Nino, for the badges. And uh, who is this here? One second. I want to give everybody their credit here. Army Uda, thank you for the badges. Deano, thank you for the badges. And Nino. So as we get close to around 800,000 shares sold, which will be in about two or three weeks, uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to uh, apply to the SEC for a higher raise offering, and it gives me the ability to do a five million share raise, a five million dollar raise. I'm sorry, and five million by that time there's going to be a premium. So the people who bought the shares at a dollar most likely will be able to sell their shares at a premium. As the second round, the shares will be worth more money, and then there'll be a third round that they allow you to do. Thank you. Um, who's this here for these badges? Week 277, and B. LeCurt, thank you for the uh, for the badges. And so as I get to round three, then there'll be another premium. So this value continues to go up. So people that caught in at a dollar, they'll be looking very, very pretty. And then by the fourth round, which is to get a stock ticker symbol for BK and get on the stock exchange, that's you know the mastery of the exit ability that you'll have. Nino, thank you for the badges, and um, it's going to be amazing. You know, it's going to be absolutely amazing. So at that point, uh, we'll be on the stock exchange and trading on platforms such as Robinhood and um, you know others, whatever other platforms can we can get approved on to trade our shares on. You know, and uh, from the stock exchange. So. Forbidden Knowledge TV is allowing this to really, is really driving this, because Forbidden Knowledge TV after one year is extremely profitable, and the valuation right now, if you take a look at it by third party uh, attorneys and CPAs, is $20 million, that's the value that came back. It came back much higher than that, but I had to dial it back because if I went with the original valuation that they came out with, the shares wouldn't be a dollar a share. And I didn't, I didn't want to start off with shares that were too expensive and people couldn't afford to get in. So I dialed it back myself just so that people can, um, you know, the numbers back, so that people can have an opportunity to get involved in the, uh, in the, in the uh, opportunity. Uh, but it will be going back up. Initially, the valuation came in at $268 million. So, but at that rate, I would probably have to open up around 17 bucks a share. And a lot of people, you know, might not be able to afford a significant amount of shares. So um, I'm not money hungry. My goal is to create millionaires. I already, I'm already rich and I already have been. So it's not like I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find a way to sell expensive shares. The opportunity is for the people, as it should be. So I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be an amazing opportunity. It's growing very rapidly. Right now, Forbidden Knowledge TV has about 5,200 shows. 
And now with this 600 gigabytes of video content that I just got out here in Egypt and Greece these last couple of months, that's enough to make about 15, 20 shows by itself. And uh, my next big trip is going to be, what do we have coming up next? I believe it's going to be, oh yeah, in March I have to go back to Egypt again to do the Emerald Tablets tour. And then in October, I'll be doing my own tour where I'm the actual guide myself with Regina Meredith. So that's going to be mind blowing. But also going to Ethiopia and uh, India to document the Kailash temple system and the Lalibela temple system. Both are built with the same technique. Uh, what's up, Carl Jones? And those, uh, thank you sincere for the badges. And so those temple complexes are built from a mountain. So they take, they go to a mountain and they start carving from the outside going in from a mountain. They don't actually use building tools or building materials to build these temples. They just start carving a mountain into a temple from the outside. Now, the thing that's so interesting about this, the same with Abu Simbel in Egypt, if you're five centimeters off when you start your first cut, you can't build the structure. It will not be sound. You can't carve out the intricate rooms and the windows and everything else because um, you know, at, over distance, an error of five centimeters over distance, it magnifies itself. And then your structure will not be perfect, perfect. It won't be under perfection. It won't have the perfect angles. It won't be stable even. So the tools and the mastery of the stonework is unimaginable. And there's tool marks at Kailash Temple and there's tool marks in the stone at Lalibela and both were, used, uh, were built using the same exact laser etching or laser uh, guided technique, I should say, just the same as Abu Simbel. So I have to go and document this and bring it to Forbidden Knowledge TV because a lot of people will never get a chance to go there. And so that's why I'm gonna bring it to you guys. I'm gonna take, bring it to you in 4K video. It's gonna be amazing, all right? Thank you, uh, Mr. Swanson, for getting a badge, all right? So it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be uh, outstanding. I have some great theories on how they built these things. I'll be bringing it to you all in the Forbidden Knowledge TV episodes that are gonna be up and coming. The Forbidden Knowledge podcast is doing phenomenal. We have now, uh, we have one coming out on Wednesday at 11, 11 a.m. That's uh, uh, a, a psychic named Courtney Kane Sides. That's on my Forbidden Knowledge podcast. You can watch her episodes on YouTube and Forbidden Knowledge TV, as well as listen to it on all podcast platforms. Okay, consciously connected with Courtney Kane Sides. Then we have Thursday uh, at 8 p.m. We have the Forbidden Knowledge podcast. That's me. And then Friday we have uh, these flies right here. <laughs> then Friday we have um, the Biohack Your Best Life. Thank you, Musical Taste, for, for the badges. We have Biohack Your Best Life with Elizabeth Hoekstra. And then soon we'll have a financial podcast from Antoine Salas, which will be the Forbidden Credit Secrets. And that'll be Mondays, most likely. And then my son is working on the podcast. My youngest son, Justin, he's 21, who just wrote his first book. He's now an author, a published author. And his podcast will be coming out. He wrote a book about manifesting. And his podcast will be coming out most likely on Tuesday. So that's the Forbidden Knowledge Podcast Network building that network up and bringing a lot of great, incredible free content to the world. Great conversations, great information, great knowledge and wisdom. And uh, that'll be on the Forbidden Knowledge Podcast Network as well as on Forbidden Knowledge TV. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on, guys. <clears throat> a lot of great stuff for you guys to partake in and listen to, watch. Um, just trying to continue to bring more and more content on a consistent basis and give everybody an opportunity to share in this. Thank you, Mr. Jaster, for the for the uh, badges. Thank you, Sincere, for the badges. Thank you, D-Row, for the, for the fireballs. <laughs> and Aquarius, thank you for the badges. All right. So, guys, I'm going to um, go ahead and, and uh, hit this gym, get a little bit of exercise. Thank you, Mr. Rover, Mr. Rover for the badges. And uh, Armadou, thank you for the badges. Black Art, thank you for the badge. Monique, thank you for the badges. Infinite Oracle, thank you. And we'll hit this gym real quick. Got to stay in shape when you're doing all these trips. Because if you don't, you'll be 
before you know it, you'll be really in bad shape because these trips will suck the life out of you if you don't really stay in shape. You have to find a way to stay in shape. Uh, it's hard doing all this stuff. Aquarius, thank you for the badges. Getting out there and crawling. I crawled 1.5 miles on my hands and toes in a push-up position through tiny shafts to get into different areas of pyramids and stuff. We too, thank you for the badges. Thank you, Black Art, for the badges. So, you know, that takes fitness, physical fitness. You gotta be strong and you have to be able to uh, withstand the heat, the temperatures, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, whatever it is, you know, and uh, if, you, if you don't, then you gotta hire somebody to do, to do the work for you. And I'm hands on, I like to be the one doing the work. I don't wanna be the one sitting back watching and happening or looking at video later. I wanna be the person that's actually in there doing this stuff because I love it. It's part of what my passion is. So, gotta go work out, get some breakfast, try to relax a little bit more today, check out tomorrow and start working my way back to the United States. Thank you, Black Art, for the badges. Thank you, Spark, for the badges. Thank you, uh, Lance Home, for the badges as well, all right? But guys, click the link in the bio on this account. Click the link in the bio on this account. Go to that invest link. Check it out. Don't miss out on the opportunity. It's a golden opportunity. You remember Bitcoin when it was five bucks. I do. You remember Ethereum when it was only a couple dollars. You remember uh, when uh, Amazon was only a couple dollars. You remember when uh, Microsoft was only a couple of dollars. Well, forbidden knowledge is one dollar. One dollar. <laughs> don't miss out on the opportunity. I'm telling you. You don't want to miss this one because if you've been following my account since 2011, you see this trajectory right here. Trajectory is going straight up. Never has it gone like this. <sighs> only up. It only gets better and better and better and better nonstop. And the company is growing and building. Even though I have my other businesses that I have, I've always had and, and ran, this is a, a one that I'm really passionate about and building it in a way that's going to allow me to help a lot of people. All right? So I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Blackguard, for the badges. I got to get out of here and hit this gym. Um, and uh, let me just check this real quick. Hold on one second. I just see. Somebody says, are the shares available on Robinhood? Not yet. The shares will not be available on Robinhood until I hit the stock market. That will be in 36 months to 48 months. Right now, you can buy them on the link in the bio on True Crowd, which is a SEC-approved funding website. Jane says, whereabouts are you in Australia? Oh, I, when I was in Australia, uh, I was in uh, Carryong 9, K-A-R-I-O-N-G, Carryong 9, just outside of Sydney, all right? So that answers the two questions that I had there, all right? So you can check that out there. Um, and uh, let's see, request. Oh, one person requested to go live with me. Just trying to give back as much as I can because I appreciate every single one of you guys. I wish I could give every single one of you guys something, but I just can't give away a million things. Not yet. Soon I'll be able to. Soon. Soon. Give me a couple more years and I'll give every single subscriber or every single follower something. But uh, at this moment, I got to pick and choose how much I can actually give away. All right. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. I'll catch y'all later.